That's These good are advice. Gucci shoes that she picked out for yeah. me. Yeah. skin pants that she was surprised that I bought. And that Morrow. vest that you've had since 2004 that you stole from Johnny no, Nitro. This, this vest I, I got custom made to wear with Daga. <laughs> it's a Johnny nice. Caballero vest. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was born in Mexico. You guys know. Caballero. You look amazing. And I love that your name changes as you evolve into different eras of John Morrison. Because last time I saw you with Progress Wrestling, you were Johnny Progress. I guess today you would be Johnny Monopoly. I feel like that's the one claim to fame I have in wrestling. I've had more John-based ring names than anyone in the history of the business. Yes, honestly, we love that. Again, the best dressed couple in wrestling. Give it up for a Manchester. This crowd is so much fun. I know that you guys were here. I'm glad that I'm interviewing here on, on Sunday because yesterday you were meeting and greeting all of your fans here in Manchester. What was it like to meet your adoring fans here in the UK? I mean, I always love coming back to the UK. I'm Canadian, so being in another Commonwealth country makes me very happy. Uh, my only complaint is that it's freezing. <laughs> No, but everyone's always so lovely every time we come out to the UK. It's been over a year now since we've been back, and hopefully we can come back maybe for, you know, a big show at Wembley Stadium. I don't know. Well, hey. <laughs> well, hey. Hopefully. By the way, I was at that show. Only 80,000-plus fans. At, who was here? Who was at AEW in Wembley? Oh, my gosh. Amazing, amazing. Huge uh, feat for AEW. It was amazing. But how has your fan experience been so far here in Manchester, John? Fans in the UK, first of all, I enjoy because I feel like you guys pay really close attention to the quality of the wrestling. Yeah. And in some places, they don't appreciate it the way that it's appreciated here in the UK. So give it up for yourselves because you are wrestling connoisseurs. <laughs> It's so true. I feel like they're, they're a little hungrier for wrestling, right? And that's why AEW did so well over here. But how are you enjoying the AEW locker room? Like, what's the vibe at AEW right now? It's been really positive, honestly, from the day I got there. Obviously, there's so many people that I know from our past experiences in Lucha Underground and Phoenix and Pentagon and Swerve and everybody. You know, like, it's so cool because we all just reconnect in all these different stages of our career. And Tony Khan, obviously, has been fabulous the entire time and always wants to see everybody thrive and do a fantastic job in creating our own space within this incredible business. Yeah, it's amazing. Sometimes you feel like you're in a place and you're handcuffed. And at AEW, it feels like no one's wearing handcuffs, which is why you get to see the type of wrestling that you get to see at AEW. People are doing the best versions of themselves. Very well said. We, AEW fans in the house, I've seen so many AEW shirts. Where are you guys? Yeah. Yes. We love it so much. Well, I have to ask you guys, I mean, when you talk about career highlights, we could go on and on about what we love about your careers, but individually, for you personally, what are your career highlights? What are moments that stick out and you go, that was a big moment for me personally? I'm sure you have so many. Yeah, I just think in every kind of layer of Taya, because I've had different eras. I mean, not as many as Taylor Swift, but we're getting there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but definitely the first time I ever won a major championship, which was my Reina to Reina's championship in AAA for the first time. Also when I won an, an the Knockouts championship, the longest reigning in history, baby. Snaps Snaps for that. When I won the tag titles twice with Rosemary and Jessica Havoc, obviously. And uh, honestly, this new stage and this new step and new chapter, I, like I said, I've had so many of being in AEW. And once again, getting to share the ring and the stage with my husband. So. Yes. Yes, we love that. Yay for wrestling love. <laughs> for me, I think my best moments in my entire career was Lucha Underground season two when I first met and got to work with the woman who's now known as the first lady of Slamtown, my beautiful wife, Ty Valkyrie. Yeah. I love that. We have to talk about wrestling love for a second, not to get too sappy. We'll get to the fan questions in a moment. But there are so many amazing power couples of which I would, you know, incorporate you guys. We've got Mickey James and Nick Aldis. We've got Miz and Maurice. But I think everyone wonders, so you are a wrestling couple. When you're home, do you kind of take the wrestling out of it? Or is it all wrestling talk? Or are you to go, babe, we're home, we're done? How does that work? Is it all wrestling talk? <laughs> you want to start? <laughs> Let's see. It's not all wrestling talk, but I don't turn off when it comes to, like, fight, choreo, training, ideas. swords, martial arts, parkour, ideas, wrestling. 
I like uh, if if I'm not talking about wrestling, it's because Taya has told me to shut up. <laughs> No, I think it's really important to, you know, have your work life, but also have your own personal life. I am a human being. He's a human being. We all are outside of, of what we do for our fans on television every week. And obviously, we talk about ideas and costumes and how we're going to do our storylines or promo ideas, but it's definitely part of our life. It's not all of our life. Yeah. That's very well said. I have to talk about, you just said costumes. And again, the best dressed couple in wrestling. <laughs> no one's touching their fashion game. I'm just being serious. Round of applause for their fashion game. I mean. All time. Literally. So, so for me as a fan, like that means a lot to me to like see someone like a Jericho. I always tell this story that when I saw him in person for the first time, everyone was like in workout clothes. Not Jericho. He was in like, you know, Playboy outfit. Amazing. Glitter. Yeah. How important and, and how important and why is it important to be so fashion conscious as far as your in-ring gear and as far as your personas? Why is it important to have that extra factor? I'll take this first of all. You guys look get a good look at Taya. If I show up looking like a schlub, guess what happens? She hits harder than most of the guys do, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for me, I come from theater and the ballet and uh, musical theater, everything like that. So my whole life has been part of this, you know, yeah. thinking about looks and thinking about characters. I think of wrestling as a visual experience. Yeah. So when you come through the curtain, people have to know exactly who you are in that second, yeah. even without knowing you at all. From a hole in the wall, like not even knowing anything about wrestling, I, w I think people should know and understand who Taya Valkyrie, who Johnny, one million names, Johnny Monopoly is. So I overthink absolutely everything and grow up like inspiration from pop culture, from movies, from music, from everything. And I try to think outside the box because in a world full of all the same people that look the same or have the same look, a lot of indie you have to, these days. yeah, you have to stand out. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the things that drew me to wrestling when I was a kid. Larger than life characters, everybody looked like somebody. Yeah. We would call it the airport test. You see yes. John Heidenreich walking through the airport and Oh, that's somebody. Yeah. Who is that? A lot of people today would not pass the airport test. Taya I love always that. passes the airport test. She's always like, whether it's a tracksuit, she's matching, she's wearing sunglasses, she looks put together. I, the airport test, hashtag airport test, now <laughs> trending. I love that because as a fan, like that meant so much to me to like see someone in an airport, like even if they don't know wrestling, they would see you guys and go, there's somebody, they're doing something important, very cool. We're gonna get to the fan questions in one moment, but I'm gonna fangirl one more time with my question. So obviously, you know, we're here for the love of wrestling. We all love wrestlers. Can I ask you guys, what are you fans of in terms okay, of okay, okay. <laughs> pop culture? It can be wrestling. Like, what do you fan out for? Because we have so many loves. It could be Star Wars. It could be film, television, whatever. What are you guys personally fans of? Um, a lot of you already probably know the answer to this, but I am a massive Drag Race fan. Yay! <laughs> I think the drag is wrestling. Everything is the same. <laughs> Um, I'm just a huge fan, and I've watched all the seasons of the Drag Race in America, Drag Race UK, the UK versus the world. I love their popping for Drag Race. That makes me so happy. Queen of the universe. Yes. Yeah. I feel like some of the best drag queens are from the UK. If you look at the Vivian, if you look at Lawrence Cheney. Yeah. Yeah. All of it. So I eat it up. Yeah. No. So what? What are you a fan of, John? Like what? What? What do you fanboy this over? Like, this is a little bit of a catch-all, but I'll say movement. And when I say movement, I mean there's tons of different disciplines of movement. We go from breakdancing to parkour to wushu to wing chun to taekwondo to karate to boxing. All the Muay Thai, all these different martial arts contain different movement patterns. And I, for some reason, really like studying the subtle differences between these movement patterns and applying them to wrestling. Yeah. To, the, to the point where I probably drive Kira crazy sometimes when she comes home at 2 a.m. and sees me swinging a boken around the living room. <laughs> trying to well, hey, True, all true. There are ways to use kendo sticks. <laughs> but I, it's, it's really what I, what I like to do. I grew up on kung fu movies watching Jackie Chan and Jet Li. And what Jackie Chan did was this crazy type of physical comedy but he took it a step further than Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton because he added violence to it and urgency yeah. 
And um, I'm a fan of creatively inventing ways to incorporate that and misdirection into professional wrestling. That's very cool. Again, it's it's fun for us. Very as different answers. Yes, yeah, yes. Drag Race and Buster Keaton. It, 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 it took a, a weird she's, turn. She's come home with like like all stars from Drag Race. Yeah. At, like, two or oh. three a.m. and I'm in the living room, literally like with swords. With swords. <laughs> Listen, we live an interesting dancing. life, everybody. I yeah, mean. <laughs> we, we've spared you, but we did threaten to have this only the panel only about Drag Race. It was this close to being only about Drag Race. But again, honestly, like because we're fans of you guys, it's cool to know like what you're fans of. So appreciate the candor there. We are here at Monopoly. We are by the fans for the fans. So now let's take it to the fans and let's get some questions, Mr. Brooker, let's. if you please. Let's. I, I am just slightly intimidated. I have to not look directly at you both, if that's okay. They're have we got pretty. any questions? You're too questions. pretty. He's intimidated by the beauty. I get it. It's very nerve-wracking. It's too much beauty in this ring. Ty Who gave you permission? I mean, we, we have to sit next to you, darling. Well, please. Uh, oh, if please. I request this direction, please, my friends. Oh, hello. hello. This is where we have those chairs. What's your name, sir? My name's Reese. What's your question? My question is, now that you're working in AEW, is there anyone that you'd like to get in the ring with that you've never been in the ring with before? Ooh. Question was, AEW, well, who would you like to get into the ring with in AEW? I mean, there's someone who's from the UK that I've never been in a match with, Soraya, obviously. I would love Ooh. to face her. Yes. Ruby Soho as well, um, as well as I would like another little, you know, time with Tony Storm because timeless needs to get snapped back to reality, darling. There's no such thing as timeless. Um, for me, there are so many first time matchups on the roster of AEW. Cesaro, Eddie Kingston. I'd love to have a longer match with Orange Cassidy, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks. Um, I've wrestled the Lucha Brothers a lot, but being in the ring with them again would be awesome. I'm forgetting so many people because there's so many people on that roster. Kenny Omega, when he gets better, I'd love to kick the crap out of him or tag with him. Either way, Takeshka, um, a lot of the guys from New Japan, Nick Wayne, who uh, we've had a lot of conversations. I'm gonna about. have a mother off with his mom. Yeah. <laughs> we've been calling Nick Wayne's mom the Wayne Maker. <laughs> uh, his finish is Wayne's World, but uh, I spent a lot of time thinking of uh, moves for Nick Wayne based on Wayne. <laughs> purple Wayne, the Wayne, <laughs> never mind. That's a tan tangent. Hashtag but, um, Purple Wayne, hashtag I can't. Purple Wayne. Top Flight, like, uh, there's so many, like, people at AEW that would be first time ever matchups for me that I think I could tear it up with that um, I think it could fill years and years of TV. Great question, thank you so much. And you're right, there is so much talent in AEW, it's hard to kind of pinpoint a specific person. But if I can ask you guys another fangirl question from me, whether it's TNA, WWE, AEW, Independence, or is, is there anyone that, you're, that you've seen that you think is a bit underrated and they should get some recognition? Like someone that you've watched and gone like, they have the it factor, you think they're really good, that people should watch out for? I mean, I'm just going to have to put one of my best friends over right now. So Heather Monroe is one of my best friends. She is an indie worker out of Chicago. She's been busting her ass for many, many years, and I really think she deserves an opportunity. Heather Monroe, see, we're gonna Google. There you go. And, and that's great. To, shout out to the younger talents that are up and coming. John, does anyone kind I'll, of strike your fancy? Yeah, I'll throw it um, Royce Isaacs. I wrestled him last year at Bloodsport. Um, He's been in the game for quite a while. I don't know if you guys have, have you seen Royce Isaacs. Do you know who I'm talking about? Um, he lives in LA. He helped me train for my boxing fight. <laughs> he punched me a lot. I punched him a lot. Um, he is a real amateur wrestler. He's got a real skill set. And I think given the right platform, he would blow up. And there's a lot of people that you could say that about. A lot of people from um, here in the UK, I bet, that I've never seen, that I bet that would blow my mind if I if I got a chance to see him. And it's uh, it's one thing about wrestling where there's so many people where time meets opportunity, 
they're ready. And for me, Royce, for Taya, Heather. Love that. Thank you so much. Mr. Brooker, let's get another fan question, shall Just we? Just one more time to get that, those names so people can look them up. There was that, what was the name you gave us? Miss Heather Monroe. Heather Monroe, get to Googling, and? Royce Isaacs. Royce yes. Isaacs. Give it a goog. Goog. Give it a goog. G it up. Hi, go. Adam. What's your name, my friend? Hey, Adam. Uh, right, this is small for Taya. Um, I understand recently you had a bit of experience with deathmatch wrestling, correct? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people have like that sort of stigma around that style of wrestling. I was just wondering, what was your experiences going in? How, what was your expectations and how was your opinion of it? How was your opinion of it now after experiencing that sort of environment? Yeah, so I've obviously had several like no DQ, extreme, lucha extrema, as they call it in Mexico, matches. But they're always usually kind of at the end of a feud because I feel like if we're going to have this extremely violent, passionate match, I want it to really mean something. And for me, that's what I've used for championship matches versus Ayako Hamada versus Camille and Triple Mania, um, you know, those kinds of situations. Um, but also, when I left WWE, my friend Pero out of Orlando asked me if I wanted to do, <laughs> I love him, I love wanted him. to do a death match. And I was going through my feelings. I wanted to feel everything. And you know, so I said yes. And uh, that was WrestleMania in Dallas. And yeah, there's a match you can see, I'm sure somewhere online. And we beat each other up on a cement floor. Heather was in that. We waterboarded him with champagne. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, in true Taya Valkyrie fashion, I showed up in an all-white outfit and perfectly white boots, and uh, I did the damn thing. And it was fun and crazy. Will I do it again? I don't know. But uh, like she I said, <laughs> I love having like no DQ, crazy, violent matches to end feuds and put the exclamation point on the end of the story. And Listen. if you want to know who the toughest person in the family is, Watch that match she just <laughs> described, and that's your answer. Only Taya could do a death match with not one hair out of place and involve champagne. Like, that's, that's classic. Oh, yeah, of course. Bravo. <laughs> that's an actual badass. We've got a question here from our friend that's come all the way from Romania, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. The Romanian nightmare, Marius. Yes. <laughs> Hello, good to see you both. My question is for you both. So, speaking about no DQ matches, um, can you please tell us your favorite match types and some explanation, like reasons why do you like them? Your favorite match types and why? Favorite match types. Um, <laughs> you know, for a long time I pitched a tanning bed match with Seamus. It's going to be kind of like a casket match, but you get close to the tanning bed and I figured he'd come out looking like brother love. But since that didn't happen and you're asking a real question, <laughs> I might go with false count anywhere because to me that opens up a world of possibilities and when I walk into a room I like looking at everything and thinking about how I would use that in a movie, stunt choreo, or a wrestling match and what can be done. And with false count anywhere, like, yeah, I get, that was probably the best match of the business career. <laughs> Uh, and for me, I would definitely have to put intergender wrestling at the top uh, because I don't get to do it a lot, very often. And my favorite intergender matches have been versus this man. I've beat him twice, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Just throwing that out there, twice. Just throwing it out there. Twice. No, but other than that, like, I really enjoy, like, having a really passionate, like, match seg like, with multiple segments and really, like, leaving it all out there. I just love creating... You know, special we've, we've moments also, for people. Like, I just love we've it. We've also Every tagged up in intergender matches. Yes, and we've also tagged up. Like, I feel like. Which are also fun, but. When we have no limitations and we can kind of do whatever the hell we want, yeah. I just have the best time. But also, I, I second that, like, the fault, you know, what you said. And then also, like, like I said, having that really passionate, multi segment, crazy, no DQ match to end a, a feud is, or win a championship yeah. is obviously the way to go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The couple that wrestles together stays together. Brooker, let's get one final question from our fans here in Manchester. Again, so thrilled you came over here all this way. If you have a question, just raise your hand. 
I've got so many fangirl questions, but we got to give it to you guys. I'll maintain. This, gent this gentleman sang the Rainbow Connection as Kermit the Frog earlier, and it was beautiful. Um, shall we go with this? No. It's up to you. you I mean, mic. also, he's willing to fight you in a tanning bed match. Uh oh. <laughs> Show me the tanning bed. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good for our people. Go ahead. What's your name, sir? Uh, it's Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Give me strength. What's Standing your question? Your yeah, Johnny, uh, when you fought in London once, it was against our truth in a, um, a number one contenders match. After the match, he started throwing a cigarette on you. Um, what was that all about? And did he get an 80 pound fine? So this is something that him and I talk about still and, and laugh about. Um, without going into too much detail, it usually starts something like this, like, yo, Johnny, remember when you cut that promo on me about smoking cigarettes and then Vince made me smoke cigarettes after every match? Oh, you like cigarettes, Ronnie? Well, have one. Have another one. Right after my match? Thanks, Johnny. And then I would be something like, you know, that wasn't my idea, bro. Like, I, I only said what Vince told me to say. <laughs> um, that was a, a crazy time. Truth is uh, one of my favorite uh, people in the business in general and tag team partners too. Um, my very favorite person in the business is sitting right behind me, obviously. Oh. And um, we came out here wanting to talk and tell everyone about something that we're working on that's really special to us called Johnny Loves Taya. <laughs> Johnny Loves Taya is a show that airs on AEW's YouTube channel. Um, it's a scripted wrestling rom-com. So think uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm or Modern Family, except everyone in the show is wrestlers. It's uh, conceived of by Taya and myself and um, one other person. We're pretty much doing everything. New episodes air every Wednesday. And... Um, I dare you not to sing along to the jingle because, yeah, you know, it'll get in your head and you won't get it out. But yeah, it's uh, new episodes of Johnny Loves Taya on the AEW YouTube channel every Wednesday. There's going to be a total of 10 episodes in this season. We worked really, really hard on this uh, to create something new and different and help with our character development and have you guys learn and see us from a different light. Uh, and obviously, we have been writing and producing uh, projects together for a long time, so it was really cool to have the support of AEW and for uh, the fans to really get to experience our crazy life with us. So please give it a follow. Please watch every episode. Please let us hear about it. Hashtag Johnny Loves Taya on social media and tell your friends. <laughs> For sure, and honestly, thank you guys for letting us see your personal life. We love both of you individually and together, of course. Johnny loves Taya. Do not miss it. Tune in. Now, guys, after you leave Manchester, what are you looking forward to professionally and personally? Personally, I can't wait to be sitting on the couch with our dogs, Bowie and Presley. <laughs> and professionally, obviously, I want to become a champion in AEW. I want to continue creating stories with my husband and creating to, continuing to create moments for the fans and expanding my legacy and continuing to tell my story in this new chapter. And whoever is champion after tonight's pay-per-view in Los Angeles, or sorry, in uh, the US, watch out. La buena loca is coming. <laughs> it's, it's not just the two of us, it's the four of us. Oh yeah, we have the Dalton Castle's boys now too, so. I'm in my mom era. We're, we're debating what to do with the boys. Any ideas? What would you, what would you do with them boys? Them boys. <laughs> Make them sandwiches. Like eat them? Dalton was feeding them those cheese sandwiches for a yeah, long time. Like, uh, I don't know if that will fly. Listen, like, our dogs eat their own order of sashimi. So we take care of our idea. own. Not a bad idea. It's a little dark. We'll, we'll keep thinking, though. If anyone else has any ideas, come up, see us at our booth, tell us later. Well, we're wishing you guys continued success. You are the ultimate power couple. We love you so much. Thank you for taking the time to come to Manchester and sharing your memories with us. Give it up one more time for John and Taya!